Report. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Aaron Maté. We turn now to Afghanistan, which has inaugurated its first new president in a decade, swearing in Ashraf Ghani to head a power-sharing government. During his inaugural speech on Monday, the former World Bank executive called on militants to join peace talks. We are tired of this war. Our message is a message of peace, and the message of peace doesn't mean we are weak. I call on Afghan government enemies, particularly the Taliban and hezb islami to prepare for political negotiations. Afghanistan's new president, Ashraf Ghani, speaking Monday. Joining him on stage was Abdul Rashid Dostum, Afghanistan's new vice president. Dostum is one of Afghanistan's most notorious warlords, once described by Ghani himself as a, quote, known killer. Dostum's rise to the vice presidency comes despite his involvement in a 2001 massacre that killed up to 2,000 Taliban POWs. The prisoners were allegedly shot to death or suffocated in sealed metal truck containers after they surrendered to Dostum and the U.S.-backed Northern Alliance. The dead prisoners, some of whom had been tortured, were then buried in the northern Afghanistan desert. Dostum, who was on the CIA, the CIA payroll, has been widely accused of orchestrating the massacre and tampering with evidence of the mass killing. For over a decade, human rights groups have called on the United States to conduct a full investigation into the massacre, including the role of U.S. special forces and CIA operatives. The Bush administration blocked three investigations into the alleged war crimes, and the Obama administration quietly closed its own inquiry last year without releasing its findings. After the massacre, Abdul Rashid Dostum left Afghanistan, but returned in 2009 to help Hamid Karzai win re-election. Since then, he served in the largely ceremonial role as commander-in-chief of the Afghan National Army. We're joined now by two guests who've closely followed the story of the 2001 massacre, as well as the rise of Dostum. Jamie Duran is with us, independent documentary filmmaker who directed the 2002 film Afghan Massacre, Convoy of Death. In 2003, Democracy Now! became the first U.S. news outlet to air the film. He joins us by Democracy Now! video stream from England. And with us in Boston, Suzanne Serkin, director of international policy at Physicians for Human Rights, the group that discovered the site of the mass graves of the Taliban POW. Susanna, let's start with you. Talk about what happened back in 2001, why you're so deeply concerned about the new vice president of Afghanistan, Dostum. Yes, well, uh, a large group of uh, fighters, mostly Taliban, surrendered to uh, General Dostum's Northern Alliance, uh, which was working as an ally of the United States at a time when, indeed, um, U.S. Special Forces, as you mentioned, were on the ground. And these um, uh, surrendered prisoners were loaded like sardines into trucks, according to a lot of testimony and evidence that we have, and transported across the desert, many of them uh, suffocated probably within days because they were not given water. They were um, locked up in these uh, essentially uh, coffins, uh, packed in. Um, we have reports of um, guns shots being fired into the trucks. Uh, possibly to create air holes, but indeed the way in which they were fired indicates that um, they were fired straight into the truck, so killing some of the, um, the surrendered prisoners. Um, and then, um, reportedly, they were all brought across to uh, this area uh, now known as Dashti Leili, uh, near the Shebergan prison. Physicians for Human Rights uh, sort of came upon this site when we were visiting the horrific conditions or discovered the horrific conditions in Shebergan, which is near uh, the northern capital of mazar -e sharif the northern city of mazar -e sharif in Afghanistan. And um, we found that prisoners in Shebergan were dying dozens a day uh, for lack of food, illness, horrible uh, sanitation. And we noticed that there uh, were bodies uh, on the surface or remains, um, bones, etc. And within a month or two, under United Nations auspices, we um, did a, a mapping of this grave and went back and exhumed a number of bodies and indeed documented that um, the deaths were consistent with suffocation. And it appears that um, U.S. Uh, forces were certainly cognizant of these deaths, 
We know this because Physicians for Human Rights actually filed a Freedom of Information Act query in 2006, and eventually we had to sue to get the information. And when it came out, we have reports from U.S. officials that indeed they knew that as many as 2,000 surrendered prisoners had died in this, uh, what we call a convoy of death, uh, and also that uh, witnesses uh, were reportedly tortured and uh, executed eyewitnesses to these crimes. And we've been advocating for a full-out investigation by the international community and by the United States and, of course, by the Afghan government itself ever since. Now it's uh, 12 years uh, and counting, uh, and we still uh, do not know um, what, what really happened at Daesh Dilevi. Well, can you lay out how these investigations have progressed? Um, in terms of uh, how this uh, went down under the Bush administration and then when Obama took office, calling for an, ev calling for an investigation and then one uh, concluding last year but not being made public? Yes, well, Physicians for Human Rights and other human rights groups have repeatedly called for an independent investigation. And um, in, uh, in 2008, when we uh, uncovered the, this, uh, we uncovered evidence that there had been apparent tampering of the site, we were able to obtain satellite imagery that showed that, um, that this, that this pieces of the site had actually been destroyed. And um, when that was revealed by um, Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist Jim Risen in a front-page New York Times story, CNN's Anderson Cooper asked President Obama if uh, the U.S. government was finally going to uh, investigate uh, this uh, apparent major war crime. And President Obama said, if this has happened, we will certainly find out all the facts, and we must if there are allegations of serious crimes in which our uh, forces uh, uh, may have been involved, and certainly our allies. And um, I have to say that since then, we have absolutely no evidence of any serious investigation conducted by the Obama administration. Uh, what Jim Risen's uh, New York Times piece also revealed is that under the Bush administration, three separate federal investigations were basically shut down. And that includes FBI agents on Guantanamo who were interviewing uh, detainees who had been brought from Chevergon prison to Guantanamo and who had started talking about this massacre, they were told not to pursue those queries any further and not to gather that information. And um, the war crimes ambassador at the State Department also wanted to go up to uh, Dashti Lely and was prevented from doing so. And the Senate investigation was also stopped. So um, that was under Bush. And the president, the current president, has um, basically a year ago said, we've completed an investigation and we are satisfied that the U.S. was not involved. End of story, full stop. No, no transparency whatsoever. In 2009, as you said, New York Times reporter James Risen, who's now being prosecuted by the Obama administration for another story he broke, to not wanting to give up a source on that, um, Risen spoke about his findings on Democracy Now! The evidence was overwhelming that something had happened and that it was the responsibility of the Bush administration to look into this or at least to push for an international investigation because Dostum had been on the CIA payroll, was part of a U.S.-backed alliance that was taking over Afghanistan. And what I found was time after time in, in, in different agencies and as far as and in the White House, uh, Bush administration officials repeatedly ignored evidence or just decided or discouraged efforts to open investigations into uh, the uh, massacre. Soon after James Risen's report was published in The New York Times in 2009, CNN's Anderson Cooper asked President Obama about opening a new investigation. It now seems clear that the Bush administration resisted efforts to pursue investigations of an Afghan warlord named General Dostum, who was on the CIA payroll. Um, it's now come out there were hundreds of Taliban prisoners under his care who got killed. Right. Some were suffocated in a steel container. Others were shot, possibly buried in mass graves. Would you support, 
would you call for an investigation into possible war crimes in Afghanistan? Yeah, the, uh, the uh, indications that this had not been properly investigated just recently was brought to my attention. So what I've asked my national security team to do is to collect the facts for me that are known, uh, and we'll probably make a decision in terms of how to pr uh, approach it uh, once we have all the facts gathered up. But you wouldn't resist categorically an investigation? I, I think that you know, there are responsibilities that all nations have, even in war. And if it uh, appears that our conduct in some way supported uh, violations of the laws of war, then I think that uh, you know, we have to know about that. That was President Obama on CNN in 2009, actually, interestingly, in Ghana. Um, Jamie Duran, you have been following this story for well over a decade. What about President Obama's response and what's happened since? You were just recently in Afghanistan, and your response to Dostum, the general, becoming the vice president of the country. Yeah, well, I, I think it's um, uh, kind of a, a picture of Afghan politics that uh, you have a man, as you said at the very beginning of your program, where the president, the, the, the new president, described him as a murderer and uh, then appoints him as his vice president simply for pragmatism purposes to get 13 percent of the vote. The Uzbeks represent 13 percent of the entire electorate. Dostum leads the Uzbeks. Afghani needed Dostum by his side in order to win that election. Jamie Durant, when we had uh, Jim Risen on our show, he was skeptical that U.S. special forces were involved in this massacre. What's your take on that? Well, well first of all, you probably don't know this, but I actually gave Jim Risen the FBI contacts that led to his story on his front page news. Uh, so, you know, that, that, let's clear that up right away. And the FBI agent was, in fact, a man called Del Spry, an extraordinary man who reported his findings from Guantanamo to his bosses in Washington. He was told, don't you know, get away from that, don't let us, don't continue investigations, don't file any report. Dell refused to, to buckle, if you like, and insisted on filing yet another report, even under threat uh, from, from his superiors. I think it, it's been a great shame that uh, Obama, we, we thought, you know, we understood Bush uh, would want to hide as much as possible. We thought Obama might be a, a fresh broom. Uh, it's not been the case. He, too, has uh, not got involved. He's not pushed it in any way. Dostum is now the vice president of a country. It's, it's quite bizarre. You know, I don't know if you're aware that Dostum actually apologized for his war crimes last year uh, in the run-up to the election. Again, an example of pragmatism. He apologized but wasn't specific. He just tried to give a kind of general apology for all the terrible things he'd done. And uh, the Afghan people seem to have bought that. Uh, in 2011, Jamie, WikiLeaks published a classified cable from then-U.S. ambassador to Afghanistan, Carl Eikenberry, about Dostum's return to Afghanistan. Uh, Eikenberry wrote in a 2009 cable, quote, Dostum's return would endanger much of the progress made in Afghanistan over the past five years, create a source of friction in the Afghan government's relations with the international community, and could well cost Karzai's government the continued support of the United States and most of the international community. Your response? Uh, well, uh, you know, I'm still waiting for the massive protest from the White House or elsewhere uh, over the fact that a murderer has been appointed vice president of Afghanistan. I mean, it, it really is that simple. It was fascinating during the election that Afghani did not uh, even bring a single photograph of Dostum when he went south to kind of to the Pashtun areas. Because everyone, if you go down there, everyone down there knows what Dostum did. Most of them, or many of them we've met, have relatives who were in that convoy uh, and who died in the most horrific circumstances. And one of the questions that you know doesn't seem to come up too often is why were they there for up to 10 days in those containers? And my information is because Americans on the ground demanded that every single person coming off the containers had to be identified to ensure that no Qaeda, no Al Qaeda, slipped through. And so these men were forced to stay in those containers for all those days in searing heat, suffocating, biting into each other's limbs to try and get fluid of any kind, because, as far as I've been told, uh, the Americans needed to know the identity of every single person.
And this is where, at Chevron Prison, is this right, that John Walker Lynn was discovered? Can you explain who he is and the significance of this? Yeah, she Shepperham Prison. Uh, no, what, what happened was that when the uh, thousands surrendered at Kunduz, I think it was 8,300, surrendered at Kunduz, uh, a, a bunch of them, about 700, broke away and went to a place called uh, Kali Jangi, a fortress, which is actually controlled these days by Dostum, but went to Kali Jangi, and they were held in Kali Jangi. There was a revolt. Most of them were killed. Uh, American Special Forces, British Special Forces were involved in the fight. John Walker Lynn was one of the survivors of that attack. And it's quite fascinating that um, John Walker Lynn's uh, private eye came to this very office to see me to ask uh, whether or not, uh, you know, I'd come across Lynn and had he been involved in any of the fighting, any of the trouble. Uh, sure enough, he then showed me footage of where Lynn claimed to have been. And my cameraman was sitting beside me and said, that's where they were shooting from me. They were trying to prove that Lynn wasn't involved at all, when in fact he was directly involved, which is probably why he bought the 20 years. We're going to break and then come back to this discussion and a clip of your film, Jamie, this remarkable film, Afghan Massacre, The Convoy of Death. Also speaking with Susanna Serkin of Physicians for Human Rights. This is Democracy Now! Back in a minute.